All right, we're going to get back to your calls momentarily. It's a football Monday. Every damn day is football. Uh, but let's check in on the world of college football. To that, we go to Kenneth Thickcott. Indeed, Oklahoma proved that Texas might not be back. Uh, Texas dropped all the way to ninth in the rankings, by the way. Is that a little bit aggressive? I think it's so stupid. Like, I laugh how you don't drop for playing no one. Texas has the most impressive victory at Alabama. They dropped a bomb on a ranked team at home in Kansas. And they play an all-time classic against a borderline top 10 team on a neutral field. And you drop them to ninth. But again, ninth it, in the AP, yeah, 11 yeah. in the coaches. And, and again, my, but, but my question is why? What's, what is your justification? They played a classic, a 34-30 final with a touchdown with 17 seconds to go. It goes to show you why the polls are useless because if anything, you don't punish a team for barely losing a game in the last minute. Now, if it was a 30-point blowout, yeah, you're going to go, you're gonna drop That's far. different. If it was 49-3 to or something, that's different. But I guess they just said, well, you lost, so everybody else who won a game right. move over one seat, Which and that was the first seat that was in. Which is Rico Beard Power Rank has more weight Thank to the you, masses buddy. than the AP poll. These idiot writers didn't even watch the game. They were busy covering whatever dead-end team they cover. On that note, do you think Oklahoma should be higher having beaten one of the best teams in the country? Should they be in the top four? No. That's not a top five team. They're lucky Texas played their B-minus game. Well, maybe. Maybe because you, you look at Ohio State, struggled. They won. OSU's um, not a playoff team, and Oklahoma's not a playoff team. But I'm saying Ohio State sitting there at three. Too high. And Oklahoma sitting there at five. Maybe Too you high. swap them, move Florida State to three, Oklahoma to four, Ohio State to... You can you know, do whatever you want. Yeah. Oklahoma's not a playoff team. Wow. If Oklahoma go to, goes to the playoffs, they'll lose by 30 if they play Michigan or if they play Georgia. So what does that say about Texas? Texas had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man. I mean... <laughs> hey, listen. Quinn Ewers starts the game. He throws a pick into triple coverage. That's not about Oklahoma. He throws another pick off a receiver's hands at the two-yard line. That's not Oklahoma. Uh, they clown car a goal line possession by deciding we're bringing in the refrigerator Perry for three straight plays when you're not an under center team. They blow a coverage on the last play. Hey, listen, it's all good. Oh, they drop an interception in the end zone. They played a bad game. They played sloppy. We'll get him in Arlington. We're good. Here's my question. What type of lanyard does Matthew McConaughey possess <laughs> that he's talking to Sark at the 50? He's on the sideline. He's dapping up players. Dapping <laughs> players. He's got a headset. What kind of VIP package does M M Matthew McConaughey have? It's the all right, all right, all right lanyard. I've never seen anything like it. He's Matthew. He's their fam most famous. Like, but every school has that guy, Mike. But Snoop Dogg didn't get that with USC okay, back but, in the day. But Snoop Dogg is not that big time booster. Like, like does McConaughey donate? Yeah. Okay. Or well, it's like shirtless at one point. Well, think man. about it. It's, it's like <laughs> back in the day with uh, Luther Campbell in Miami. He could get Uncle Luke could go wherever he wanted with the Was hurricane. he on the field with Jimmy Johnson? Yeah, he was running out the team with the smoke and all oh, of that. They were cutting away from the pregame, and it's him and Sark chopping it up. I'm going, <laughs> isn't this the time he's supposed to be talking no, to Venables? No, because Stark, Stark knows, hey, I'm with Matthew McConaughey. I may get a couple more recruits. So, hey. Hey, here's a PSA, and we'll move on to the rest of Kenny's Blitz. If it's fourth and goal from the one-foot line, can we not throw a screen pass? Please, it's a dumb play call. Oh, so Georgia blows out Kentucky, fifty-one to thirteen. I'll be selfish here. You all weren't sure about Georgia last week in the weeks leading up to this game. How much have things changed with Georgia in your mind? A lot, and I'll tell you why. They stopped pretending. You're not a power running team with McCat, with McConkey, with Ra Ra, with Lovett, and with Bowers. Carson Beck is figuring it out. He could have thrown for 700 yards Saturday night. That's not even hyperbole. He had 300 at the half against Kentucky, and they left some points on the field. Their passing game right now is second only to Washington. I'm not, I'm not kidding. It is as potent and diverse and dominant. And again, Bowers is a unicorn. You can't cover him. There's nothing you can do. 
I mean, you beat Kentucky. I mean. Rico, say something nice about Georgia. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. They didn't just beat Kentucky. <laughs> Mike, Mike. I had to listen to him oh, all oh. morning long. So. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> My bad. No, no. If Kenny's not listening, it's what I've been waiting to see Georgia do. It's it's the same way I praised Michigan last yes. week. If you're number one, show me you're number one. Yeah. Just quit this. Okay, we're 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 gonna pull away in the fourth quarter. I don't want to see that. Michigan and Georgia see- right now are one two in the Rico Power Poll. I'll give you a hint. They're all in the top three. Done. No, no slander. Go ahead. So I want to play a game with you all called Explain It to Me Like I'm Five. Oh. Miami. No. Explain no. it to me like I'm five. <laughs> okay, so Kenny. No. Here's what happened. No, no, no. You no. turn around and you have to run out the clock. But seriously, I had to look to see if there was any betting ramifications on because this looked like a coach who knew I'm going to hook up my fan base real quick with something. Because Rico's not providing context. Unless you're a loser, you weren't watching Miami, oh. Georgia Tech. 37 seconds to go when Georgia Tech doesn't have a timeout. Miami first and 10 at their own 30 or whatever it is. You take a knee. Third you down. take a knee. You take a knee. Right. You take a knee. You take a knee. So on third oh, down. wait. Mario Cristobal is shoving his head up his... <laughs> and they ran it. Fumble! Georgia Tech gets the ball. Moon ball by Haynes King. Touchdown, they lose. And Miami's players are on the bench going, what the... They're crying. Oh, four plays later. I felt later. horrible for the kids. Four Here's, plays later, there's a touchdown wide open. What happened? Here's your problem. That's not the first time Cristobal's done this. Because I remember the last time he did it. Because he effed me out of money. It was Oregon at home hosting Stanford. Mm -hmm. Third down, 40 seconds to go. Stanford has one timeout. Don't care. I have the ball. It's second down. Second down, they have one timeout. You kneel, kneel, we're going home. He hands it to Shane Vereen, left side towards the sideline. Fumble. Oh, how about this? Stanford beats him. How about this? Instead of just owning it and saying, God, I screwed up again. Well, we, we preach both hands on the ball. He literally is blaming the running back when it's like, coach, do your math. 37 seconds left. They don't have a timeout. There's literally 40 seconds between plays. Just one time I want a coach to go to the podium and go, I'm a horse's bleep hole. That's it. Any other questions? I effed up. I lost my mind. I was drinking cocktails. Uh, Champagne, uh, champagne cocktail. Whatever. Kenny, own the moment. There, there was no excuse for that. He has lost the right to coach football for money. That, he should be thrown in prison. There's, there's only a few times where if the AD walked down and said you're fired, it would be justified, and that's one. You just take the knee. He goes, you sure about that? Breaking news. We have a gambling ramification to Mario Cristobal. Big G had a 14-leg money line parlay. Miami, his lone loss. I have. Oh, he's sitting in the chair with the empty seat. I mean, empty tickets around him. The losing tickets. Mario Cristobal <laughs> ruined it all. Oh, wow. No. wow. Any other questions? Yeah, just one more. Outside of the top couple programs in the country, we see quite a few fringe playoff teams. Washington, Oregon, USC, Alabama, Ohio State. USC State. is not a playoff team. Is this a year that helps the argument for expanded playoffs? Yes. This year, if it was a 12-team playoff, would be electric. Mm-hmm. It would be nuts. Because it really would be who – it would be Styles versus in, – in the fights. Like, who plays who? Because USC is showing. They're ass. We can't play t- – like, why am I up at 2 o'clock in the morning watching this game? I'm not. <laughs> it's called bet whoever they play plus the points and go to bed. I just wanted – I thought they were going to lose. They should have. They should have. There's just no other way around. I mean, it was like, wow, Arizona said, how about we try this new defense? Seven defensive backs on the field at all times. Jed Fish doing a nice job. I know it doesn't show in the record. That's a hard program to win at. Jed Fish is getting some talent down there. It really is, man. Their receivers are nasty. That cowing kid from UTEP is really good. Sorry, we're geeking out on Wildcat football. Call us with your favorite Tucson hotspot. No, that's what this is for, and that is... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't get to verbally assassinate Jimbo Fisher in this segment? You sure can. I just didn't know if we had time, but go You for hillbilly it. piece of garbage. <laughs> Fourth and one in plus territory, and you don't go for it? And then in the post game, you go and you go, well, if it was half a yard and not a whole yard, I would have. Oh, horse's ass. 
Jimbo Fisher is the most overrated coach in the history of sports. Jimbo Fisher has all the resources. I mean, golden toilets at the facility, all the recruits, all the money, everything. You're at home, and you can't beat this welfare government cheese version of Bama? You piece of hillbilly trash. Yeah, Mike. There, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of things like that because then you also have to wonder why in the world did Marcus Freeman, with ten minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and you're only down nine points, fourth and eleven, and he goes for it on I his th- own. I'll side tell you why. I'll field. tell you why. I think he knew my team is exhausted. We can't give the ball. Because my defense is gassed. Rico, look at their schedule. They've played since week I understand, zero. but it's There's like, a reason cash the ticket was on Louisville plus six and a half. Well. You're betting a spot, people. And then guess what? Another night game this coming Saturday. And I may have to bet. <laughs> oh. Wait, wait, it's USC, right? Yeah, and oh. USC is trash. Oh, no today. Okay. Oh, Rico's girding his loins. This is exciting. One of the best helmets in college football. And that is your college football blitz.